so one of the things I want to talk about is, you know, to sort of start with review, from last time we were looking at these redox reactions or these coupled half reactions that can produce an electrochemical cell or a battery. Um, and so sort of a generic drawing of this, which will be sort of refresher for you. Um, we're going to have, by convention, we're going to have our cathode on the right side of any of our drawing. This is our metal, and it is in um, a solution of its ions. Right. On this side, we have our anode. This is some other metal, and it is in a solution of its own ions. So if it's zinc, it's zinc sulfate or zinc nitrate or whatever, and on this side we have copper nitrate and copper sulfate or whatever, whatever our pair was, um, silver and copper we did last time. And so which side has reduction happening? Right or left, anode or cathode? Right, okay. So this is reduction. Reduction means it's taking on an electron, okay? And by convention, we put reductions at the cathode, reductions on the right side. That's how we're going to draw it. Um, on this side, this is the metal that's being um, oxidized, which means it's giving up an electron. So here, metal ions are sort of popping off into solution, and the electrons are flowing up a wire over to here, and then on this side, ions in solution are taking up these electrons and kind of going back onto our cathode, okay? Gaining an electron, losing an electron. What is the only thing missing from my drawing to complete this cell? A salt bridge, okay? So either something that looks like this or maybe some connection down at the bottom. We need some salt bridge so our other ions can flow um, and we don't have a buildup of charge. So basically, molecules that form a redox couple can be used to uh, generate a current in an electrical circuit, which is essentially what's being built here. And our goal, what I sort of alluded to last time, is what we ultimately care about is we want to relate uh, the voltage generated in the circuit. And so other ways to think of voltage included uh, electromotive force, electric potential difference, um, delta E okay, is our notation for it um, in volts. So we want to relate the voltage generated by our circuit to the free energy change. Free energy change is given by delta G of the underlying chemical reactions that are happening, right? And so we've already looked at plenty of chemical reactions, and there was some delta H term for it, some delta S, some delta G, and we knew how to put all those together and figure out, okay, is that chemical reaction spontaneous? Okay. So for a general case here, this is sort of a, a general redox case. Let's say we have A um, being oxidized and giving up its electron, and then we have B taking up an electron and getting reduced, we can write this as sort of a balanced chemical reaction. We can sum these up. Um, so we're summing and we're also canceling. Okay, and this is going to be true of any set of reactions. Okay, if you're being asked to put together a thermodynamic cycle to get to a final reaction, you can be summing up equations to get to the final reaction you've been asked for. Okay, these are going to drop out on either side. 
And so I have A plus B plus going to um, I have this wrong in my notes. Okay. Uh, B plus the ionic version of A. And if I tell you um, that this is spontaneous, how did we decide which metal would oxidize and which metal would reduce when we had a pair together? We're going to look at a standard reduction potential given to us off of the table. And what were all of those standard reduction potentials compared? How were we, they determined? What was the standard they were set to, Logan? A hydrogen electrode. We're looking at a half cell reduction only and comparing it to a hydrogen um, zero volt potential. And how we actually did that is we built our cell with hydrogen and we put some power supply on it to perfectly oppose the voltage being generated. And then that's how we know what was being generated by the chemical reaction. Okay, so if I tell you that this reaction is spontaneous in this direction, I know that delta G is less than zero. That is the definition of spontaneity. Free energy change is less than zero. Another way to maybe say this is that free energy of just um, the positively charged like A ion is lower than the free energy of A, okay? Because going this direction is negative. So that means the free energy here must be less than the free energy here. When I subtract this minus this, it will be uh, delta G is equal to this relationship. And I can set up a similar sort of setup for um, whatever my species B is. If it's spontaneous, then the reverse reaction is non-spontaneous by definition. If I know that one direction is spontaneous, I know that the other direction is not spontaneous, and I know that the free energy change is same in magnitude, different sign, flip your sign. Okay? And again, this is something that's also going to be broadly applicable if you have a chemical reaction, whether delta H is at the end of it, you've been given an enthalpy change for that chemical reaction, a free energy change, whatever it is. If you flip the direction, flip the sign, keep the magnitude the same. Okay, and that's just a tip, a tip to use going forward. Okay, and so then another thing we saw before, recall that we saw the absolute value of delta G was greater than or equal to the absolute value of work. And I don't know how it's written on your equation sheet. It might say like non-EXP or non-PV, this means it's types of work that are not pressure volume expansion work. That is what that is indicating, okay? So we're talking about other types of work that are not pressure volume expansion. Okay. That's, that is all that means there, that the maximum amount of work you could get from that free energy output would be, it's set by the, how the magnitude of delta G sets how much work you could do. Um, the absolute values sort of indicate that we had sign convention for expansion work, it was negative. Depending on whether we're doing chemical concentration work, electrical work across some sort of charge difference, the sign could be different depending on what ions are moving where and what charge they have. Um, and so the absolute values here are just sort of taking into mind that it's no longer just this, it's negative work when it's expansion convention anymore. Um, we're talking about biological work now. And the other thing, if you're interested, section 914 has sort of the, the proof of this relationship and discusses the absolute values in more detail. Okay. And then another thing we saw on a previous table was work is equal to the integral of the difference in electric potential integrated over dq. 
DQ in this case, it's not heat, it's change in charge. Okay, this is change in charge, this is a voltage difference. And so I think given what's going on here, you can kind of anticipate the relationship to delta G. I'm just going to drop it down into this equation, okay? And then just once again, I'll write these out for you. Sort of the, the voltage definition, voltage being delta E here is electromotive force, electrical potential difference. It is the work needed to move a charge uh, between two points across a potential difference. Another way to say that same thing is that if a charge, um, if a charge of one coulomb moves across a difference of one volt, one joule of work is done. One volt equals one joule per so those were all definitions that we actually saw before 